Let's talk about online marketing as we lease our self-storage facilities. Hello, my name's Mark Helm, and I'm the author of Creating Wealth Through Self-Storage, and I'm the creator of the Quick Start Academy. And what I do is I support the small investor who wants to get in the self-storage business or who wants to grow their self-storage business, strategically do so in a way that creates true wealth and a fulfilling career. And let's talk about online marketing today. Now, let me start by saying I'm not an expert in the area of online marketing, but I've never worked with an expert that has produced any kind of results for me in the self-storage space. No expert has ever asked me, what's the value of a customer for you? What would you like to achieve by doing a marketing campaign? What are your goals? How would you say you're, you would come out ahead doing an online marketing campaign? No one's ever asked me those questions. To me, that seems like a very fundamental type place to start as you begin a marketing campaign. So I've made it my business to study what other industries do and begin to learn this business. Now, my goal is not to be an expert, but my goal is to know enough, A, to produce some results using online marketing, and B, to know when I hear an expert in the self-storage space to recognize it. Now, I don't want to continue down this line talking about experts and online marketing, but I will say it's critical today because as more square footage hits the market, which it has, we as the smaller investors have got to be able to compete with the larger players in the REITs and they are good at online marketing. So unless you develop an online marketing strategy, you're just gonna be left behind. In today's world, the vast majority of marketing is done online. So I have found in, in the online marketing world, Google and Facebook account for probably 93 to 95%, if not more, of all ad spends online for marketing. Now, I have found Google to be much more complicated and much harder to figure out and work in than Facebook, but we have strategies for both. So if your business strategy, if you don't want to figure it out and your business strategy is, well, I'll rent to people who don't use Google, well, in my humble opinion, that's a flawed strategy. And if you're waiting for your website to organically start appearing in Google, in my opinion, that's a flawed strategy too. So if you want a good marketing campaign, look at what the big guys do. Try to figure out what they're doing and somewhat model off of it. So let's talk in general. I don't want this to be a training on online. If it's something you're interested in, we can create it. But let's talk in general and kind of give you some directions to go and start learning and exploring. So let's talk about the types of campaigns. To keep it simple, basically there's two types of campaigns. There's brand awareness campaigns, and then there are offering and rent now campaigns. If you want to look at it another way, one's more at the top of the funnel and one's more at the bottom of the funnel. They each have their place, but I recommend with your marketing budget, probably 20% goes for the branding or top of the funnel campaigns. The rest of it, 80% should be for the bottom of the funnel type campaigns. So let's talk about brand awareness campaigns for a minute. Brand awareness campaigns are good to do, especially if you're building or expanding or have just purchased something and are repositioning it. It's great to do brand awareness campaigns in your market area. Uh, where the people begin to see your facility, begin to see where your facility is located, begin to see the name of the facility. So as they drive by it, they begin to recognize it. We typically do our branding awareness within a you know five, maybe seven mile 
out to seven miles from where our facility is, but it's targeted just for the people in that market area. Now we do it a little bit different than many people do. I don't use a brand awareness campaign. We, we use Facebook primarily for this because uh, Facebook is good for images and pictures and videos. And what we do is instead of running a campaign designed for conversions, in other words, to get people to rent, or for even, quote, brand awareness, which is a selection of a campaign type in Facebook, we usually do videos and we run ads for video views. In other words, the Facebook algorithm will optimize and show it to people who Facebook recognizes or people who will watch video. And what we, you've got to be creative in this way. You've got to be able to create a video that people, that is interesting and would stop people as they're standing in line scrolling. Remember the old days where you used to stand in line at a Starbucks where they're scrolling through their news feed and would actually watch something. So you got to be a little creative. We've come up with titles like, here's what self-storage owners don't want you to know. And I'll talk about security and selling disk locks and how disk locks are probably one of the best deterrents for break-ins or with the idea that we want to catch people's imagination and have them watch the video or part of the video. We've run videos like, are you tired of getting rent increases at your storage facility? So we'll target that in our area and we especially look for people who've been to some of the REIT websites and hopefully, you know, with the idea being that they're currently renting storage and they're renting storage at a REIT, we know they've had price increases and in that video, we talk about pricing strategies and how we're not using dynamic pricing at the moment and we'll lock your rental rate in for a while. Um, now, we optimize for video views with the thought being that Facebook will measure people who've watched the video, 25%, 50%, 75, 90%, and 100. Our rationale is if somebody's watched 50% or more, they're interested in self-storage. So what we do is we will retarget those people with a specific offer, but the rest is just for brand awareness. That's one of our better, quote, branding type strategies. But the majority of our ad spend is on Google. And Google's more complicated. It's a longer learning curve. We run mostly search campaigns and pay-per-click pay campaigns. So what we do is we use the Google Keyword Planner and we see how people in a specific area, what are the keywords they're using the most to search for self-storage. Then once we get those keywords, we design marketing and advertising, you know, what we're going to say, and we will do a pay-per-click for those particular keywords. In other words, when someone types those keywords in, our campaign will bid, it's like an auction, will bid for that word. And there's a lot more you have to learn about bidding strategies and how the Google algorithm work. But in today's world, what we're finding, at least in the markets that we're in, we're having to spend between five and nine dollars a click, which is expensive. So you really want to have a well thought out strategy. It's all, sometimes it's better not to go for the main keywords, but maybe go for some of the lesser keywords, but still be able to show up in a significant number of searches for people. So you're not spending all of your money on a couple of words. You can design a budget, you can create a budget, and basically when that, it's a per day spend in Google, and your budget, once it's used up, you're cut off for that day and it starts again the next day. So you can experiment around and design your budget. But in my humble opinion, it's important to show up where people are looking and people are looking in Google. So at the very least, do some pay search campaigns, do the pay-per-click and begin to show up where people are looking for self-storage in your market area. There's just a learning curve to do it. My coaching is learn what's involved in it. Don't just turn it over to someone. 
unless you set up all the tracking, which is not a easy thing to do, it takes something, then you're not going to know how effective your Google marketing is. You're just going to be guessing. But once you can set everything up and measure the effectiveness, in other words, how many people rent a unit from Google Ads, then you'll start getting some real data and some real numbers and begin to know how to tweak your marketing. So we're mostly doing online marketing in markets where other REITs are. So our ad spend is going to be higher than if market areas where there are no REITs or larger players. So I'm not sure what it might be in smaller markets. I'm just sharing with you what we're doing to stay relevant with the larger players in our market. That five to nine dollars is something we're spending right now. One of the biggest mistakes I see people doing is once somebody clicks, they just take them to your website. Well, that's better than not having them go to your website. But sometimes there's a lot of stuff to do on a website and people will not necessarily do what you want them to do or what you hope they'll do. I recommend taking them to the most relevant page on your website. In other words, if you're running an ad where you're talking about a special with a certain unit size, or you're running an ad inviting people with a call to action to rent now, don't take them to the home page. Take them to the page where they can actually rent the unit right there on the website. Sometimes I take people to landing pages, which are website pages, but they're not necessarily part of my website. I take them to, if I'm doing an offer for a free lock or I'm doing an offer for uh, here's a discount coupon, I'm going to take them to a landing page where there's only two things you can do. You can either claim the offer, at which point they click it and they go in and to my website and lease a unit or they print something off or they leave. They've got two options, buy or leave. And sometimes that's, I test stuff out. Sometimes in some markets that strategy works a lot better than just taking them to my homepage and hope they navigate their way through it to rent a unit. Many of the experts will tell you other to do otherwise than what I just said. I'm just sharing with you my experiences and I've never been very happy with the results I've received from these experts. My whole goal is to get the biggest bang for my buck I can. So I want to use the majority of my money for people at the quote bottom of the funnel who are know that they're looking for storage today and want to rent. Those are the people I want to show up for. I do. We do some branding, but the majority of our budget, 80% of our budget is spent for people who are looking to rent and looking to rent now. And speaking of budgets, we as owners are going to have to spend more of our budget money on marketing. In the old days with the yellow pages, your marketing budget could be 20,000 on the low end to 50,000 on the high end. And then online came along and there was a, a shortage of spaces and the economy was turning and then there were a number of years where all you had to do was turn your lights on and people rented units. Those days are gone. Some of the consultants that are in the self storage space are telling people to you that you need at least a $10,000 a year budget. Well, think about it. If you are doing a Google search ad campaign and you average $50 a day, which is not a big spend, frankly, that's $18,250 a year just for Google. So ten dollars to $20,000 is about the budget size that most people should be spending. It can even be larger in lease up situations. But that's what it's going to take today and for the foreseeable future to stay relevant in the self-storage space. 
I recommend putting 20% of your marketing budget for brand awareness and out of that quote brand awareness we'll end up leasing some units with some retargeting ads but and then 80% of it we put at the bottom of the funnel on Google now some people split this bottom of the funnel this uh, the majority of their budget will spend some on Bing and Yahoo as well as Google we don't maybe we should we just haven't we know that Google gets the lion's share of people searching um, we may explore with that but we have a very limited budget so we want to get the most we can out of our limited spend we have now I would be interested in hearing anything you've got to say about online marketing things that you've done that have worked things that you've done that haven't worked and I'd love to hear from you and have you share with our community leave a comment below if you would or have anything to share that you think can help if as small investors we get together and learn how to effectively market our facilities we're going to stay relevant in the future as we compete with these larger publicly traded companies that have lots of money to throw at Google AdWords spends this topic is only going to get more relevant as time goes on and remember whatever you're learning to do today it's going to be different six months from now this is a dynamic industry it's growing and changing fast and nothing's changing faster than online marketing so just be in constant learning mode and constant testing mode you approach marketing that way not like the old days where you create an ad one time in yellow pages and you're done for the year here it's a daily thing so that's what I have to share today about online marketing for customers in the self storage industry and thank you very much my name's Mark Helm I'm the author of creating wealth through self storage and I'm the creator of the, the storage world analyzer that's the financial analysis modeling tool that we use where we're redoing many of our analysis with an increase in the advertising budget if you're using Excel great but I invite you to look at storage world analyzer go to storageworldanalyzer.com or creating wealth through self storage.com hit the storage world analyzer tab thank you very much I look forward to being with you next week